Hello. Hi, Bertie. Hello, hello, hello. Um, Hi. So I'm super excited to speak with you today. Um, just for everybody who's watching this interview, this is a project called Stortkop Confessions. Um, today is Friday, August 20th, 2021. Yes. And it's part mm -hmm. of Singing in the Shower Concerts, which is um, an initiative that I started last week, oh, last year, May 2020. You can check it out on Facebook. So let's start. Um, so, Wouter awesome. Reineke is joining me today. Wouter, first thing Hi, I want to ask you to do. Hello. Um, please, yes. please tell everyone a little bit about your musical background, um, where it started and, you know, up until the point before the South African lockdown, what, what have you been building up for yourself as a musician in South Africa? Okay. Well, um, firstly, I um, studied music uh, in the early 2000s. So I've pretty much been a professional bass player since then. Um, did that for many years. Then um, I moved into teaching a little bit. It started lecturing. I've also been doing that since 2009. Now. So I've just always been playing gigs, um, live stuff, TV stuff, touring, and um, teaching. A lot of it. I've, I've now uh, become a campus manager for the past, I've been doing it for six, seven years now at a, at a camp, college called Campus of Performing Arts. So, um, look, everything was, was before lockdown was, was great. I mean, <laughs> looking back now, uh, funny thing is there's a <laughs> saying, it's a bit of a joke, is how, how do you get a musician to complain? You get him a gig. But I mean, times have changed so much since then. <laughs> I look back now, there was nothing to complain about. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, things yeah. were happening. I, I just moved to Cape Town. Um, the market was booming. Uh, I did some really nice gigs, got to play with some A-list um, artists. And the college was doing well and, and, and all of that. And then March 2020, everything just changed in literally two weeks. Everything. And it yeah. hasn't completely, well, it hasn't even half recovered yet. Yeah. Exactly. I want to ask you um, if you can go back to that kind of moment in time where reality hit that you cannot gig, you cannot teach, everything, it, it just stopped and it's chaos. I want you to tell me what were your thoughts, your mental thoughts, your emotions and the type of plans that you came up with in the beginning in comparison to, let's say, the last like year and a half. Like, what plans did you initially have and did they work out? Like, you know, the, the solutions that you thought will work, the things that you thought will work. What yeah. did you think? You know, yeah, you know. so um, to start off with, I thought it would be a nice three-week break. As I say, things were busy, so it wasn't, wasn't that, that bad. So, but obviously, quickly, we realized it's going to go longer. So we, we started with, with the college. Um, we immediately started. Uh, I know the schools shut and the university shut for an early holiday, but we immediately, after two weeks of um, us just trying to figure out where this thing's going, we immediately started moving to an online platform. We started using Zoom and we graduated that whole 23 group um, through online classes only. Um, I think we, we went back on site at the end of the year to do the assessments, but we successfully um, had a great uh, pass rate and everything similar to other years Classic. and to me I'm, I'm quite proud of that that kept me busy um, awesome. so that changed i worked from home mm. from eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock without there was just no time to go to the shops or wow. wander around it wasn't like working from home um, with freedom at all but mm. that kept me busy and, and it kept me going so that changed a lot but obviously with gigs not happening it was a big challenge to try and stay relevant and still um, in people's top of people's minds as a session bass player and also to to explore how you can almost um, just try and survive and keep busy musically because that was important in the beginning it was just about just, just playing for playing just to keep going doing streams um, doing little videos recordings writing stuff um, learning new skills along the way I've set up a little home studio so yeah you yeah, had to quickly quickly adapt and I think um, that's the same story, similar story to, to most of the guys. But being able to adapt doesn't necessarily mean you back at where you started financially or emotionally um, 
as well. So Exactly. We all have to adapt, but again, like we, we're still looking for that um, that security that we had. We're still looking yes. for that. You know, it's still not there. So it's fantastic that we have new skills, but like you said, we're still not there. Um, I want to ask you something sure. about um, a performance career and also being a music teacher. Do you think that if you only focused on performing, like you were a full-time performing musician, as opposed to a musician who works in music full-time, but also teaches, that you would have been able to cope with all the like administration stuff that comes along with teaching and, you know, the other side of the brain that needs to develop in a corporate environment. Do you think that it's, it's, it's valuable to have that type of um, skills, those types of skills to work at an institution where you have to do admin, you have to do contracts, you have to get management, all that stuff. What does that mean for you as, as a musician to have those skills? Yeah, look, um, it's it's extremely important these days. It wasn't always, obviously. Um, I mean, back in the day, you could just look at all the successful artists that, I mean, some of them were, but many of them didn't have a clue about the music business. Elvis, for one, he was managed by that um, girl. I forgot his name now. But, um, I mean, if it wasn't for that partnership, Elvis, would, as, a, as a brand, not really have existed. So... Musicians will always, because it takes so much time and it takes a certain type of personality that doesn't really lend itself to um, organizational skills, networking, stuff like that. Um, and if you look at, so it's difficult to find someone that's talented, that's willing to go the hard yards and also have business sense. That's why there were always teams around these people. But these days with the market being mm. completely different now, it's almost more important to have the business skills to be able to tell yourself and to network and set up, uh, you know, structures and get a team together um, than it is to be a very good musician. Because at the end of the day, these days, anyone can play, anyone can record. Um, you know, there's mm. no gatekeepers left. So that's it. what are you going to do on top of that? You can't just play, you need to mm. develop a brand. But all that stuff has, has changed and, and working at, you know, corporate uh, environment really taught me a lot about, you know, working with clients, keeping it professional, setting up schedules, um, just managing yourself within time, all those skills that, that we often neglect as musicians. It, it's not mm. because we're lazy, I think. It's just that due to the way our lives are structured and what we need to do on a daily basis, we kind of forget about that stuff. But mm. the market has changed so much that if you do forget about that stuff these days, you're going to get left behind. Oh, I think so. Because um, I kind of saw that there are many musicians who performed full time. They've never taught ever. And now they started teaching for the first time in 20 years. And that's something that, yes. you know, it almost feels like, okay, that's like plan B and I can just quickly go to that and, and teach. But to teach is really a profession on itself. It really is something separate. Obviously, you need the theoretical knowledge and all that other stuff, but it is also a separate skill and a talent to have, I think. Um, but luckily, okay. we have that avenue. You have that avenue to do it. Uh, it's just not as easy as you might think, you know, vice versa for the business side and the performance side. So we can, I think we need to diversify, I guess, and, and um, become versatile in what we do. Um you yeah, that, that, that's definitely true. I mean, <clears throat> we need to, if you can do that, it's great. But like you said now, is it, it, it feels like a plan B because now we can't perform, so you quickly get a few students. For me, it was a natural progression because I have taught for a very long time already. I've got a bunch of Zoom students now. I try to keep a yeah. certain teacher, certain kind of student, adults and guys that actually kick and stuff, which is how I enjoy that. Yes. But <clears throat> for, it, I feel sorry for guys that, that have to now dig deep. Like you said, they've been playing for 20 years, they've all this knowledge, but now they need to kind of figure out a way to be comfortable over Zoom, teach it. A lot of them are probably very good at it, but, but I mean, that, that can't be nice to, to go from there, having to teach guys on Zoom, if it's not really in your value system. It's not something that you set out to do because like you rightly say, um, teaching is a calling as well and you need a certain kind of personality and, uh, well, not, not personality, but you need to enjoy it. 
similar to playing yeah. music. It's not fun to practice. So there's lots of stuff that's that's crap, but when you're playing with other musicians, that's where it's at. So teaching, there's lots of stuff behind the scenes that you need to mm. work on to be mm. able to, to be an effective teacher. And it's also not that easy yeah. to, to get students. You, you think that mm. if you're a, the, the, the most famous guitarist in the country, people would run to you, but it's not, it doesn't really work like that. Mm. That's exactly what I wanted to ask you next. Um, the people who have the famous faces can rely on that to get work in. I mean, if any famous singer in our country decides that she wants to give singing lessons, then people will go to her because they know her face and they love her music and everything. But like, I wonder about session musicians like yourself, a person who gets booked in bands or in recording sessions, you know, what, what do you have to rely on? And you, you guys are very much a part of the success of those people with the faces that they can rely on the famous faces. So you are, you are part of that structure really. And it almost feels like, you know, where do you guys go there now? So like you say, it's, it's hard. Nobody's just going to come running to Raymond Green or to Fluish or to Vinny. You know, those are the people that I look at when I watch TV and I say, ah, oh, you see big five years yes. TV. Um, you know, then I, I'm interested yeah. in them, but that's the thing. So yeah, um, Oh, anyway. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and the thing is, um, uh, I lost my train of thought now slightly, but <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with, with teaching, yeah, but with teaching, it's, 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 oh, it's definitely a calling, but um, at the end of the day, um, performing is, is definitely where it's at. Working with students is another thing, but that's the part that's missing. And um, we yeah. need to try and find a way of, of getting back to that. Oh, yes, I would say as a session musician, like you said, the days of just um, playing for people, um, just doing sessions have been over before lockdown anyway. It's all about branding. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how the, singer, the, the artists could survive, by, by recording birthday messages and happy birthday messages yeah. for, for, your, for yeah. people's girlfriends and stuff like that. So yeah. if you can leverage a brand um, through this time, it was extremely valuable. And that just yeah. shows how important that part of it is. Even as a musician, as, as just a, a, a hype guy, you need to brand yourself and, and network and make yourself visible in so many areas and ways that, that wasn't necessary before because the competition is so, so strong. And now, yeah. Um, yeah, that's where the focus should be. It's on building that. That should be a wake-up call for us all. And, and really start to reach out in the world's your voice thing. You know, you know these guys that yeah. are, I know of a drummer that got five students from China. Um, he's got his own wow. five now. They're paying him four or five times the rate of his South African students. And there's exactly. people that are doing mixes. A guy in Fortuna back is doing now a mix for an artist in Italy. And there's lots of that going around. So it's it's... But again, it's being adaptable. But at the end of the day, let's let's start at this little um, this little section. Is we need to get live performance back. And at the end of the day, yeah. I think the only way we're going to do that is through vaccinations. I agree with you. Like, yeah, that really is the only way. That's the reason why we can't go and yeah. gig. You know, um, yeah. So the other thing that I I was missing a lot about live performance, not just the music, but to be able to communicate and have banter with your tribe, you know, the, the moan sessions yes. backstage and the, you know, the venting and the jokes and that stuff. That's also something that keeps us alive. Like this interview, we're two musicians, we speak the same language. It's a different type of conversation than that you would have with your family or friends or other people. Yes. So I also miss that, you know, see your language to be understood. Um, yeah, but definitely getting the gigs back. But what's awesome about it now is if you have an online uh, platform where you're gigging now, like I know Michael Lint gigs every Saturday evening um, on Facebook Live. Mm. When Michael goes out now yes, yes, and he yes. does a gig, he has a massive following. People will go and watch his gigs. The old days you go, mm. like you remember, gigs at Cafe Barcelona, which rehearse for five hours straight and the band plays and everything's yeah. amazing then 20 people will show up and pay 10 rand at the door and it's 10 rand for 20 years <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. and so that's the thing thank yeah, god for this whole change eh? mm. 
Very much so. Yes, because it, so. it, 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 it honestly has also put a value on, it's, it's stress that they, or it's, it's on a spotlight on the value that musicians bring because all of a sudden, um, I know there, there, there was big support through the first two lockdowns, but I think people have just run out of um, the capacity to really go beyond helping mm. anyone but themselves. But the, yep. the, the musos need to now, again, through this lockdown, have to stop everything. Now everyone's picking everything up again. And the next lockdown is going to be October, November, they said. So we're yep. looking at maybe six weeks where you can make a buck, pay a few bills, and then... Um, it's it's back to chilling again. So, sure, uh, yeah. and there is yeah. no excuse. You need to adapt. It's the way the world is. But it would be nice if there was some kind of government support at some stage. I know there's, there's been some stuff, but not enough, I think. And mm. if, like us, like we said, vaccinations, man, we can get back. I heard on on a radio station this morning, um, yeah. some health ministers talking. Deputy Minister, and he said that by December, if everyone now jumps in and gets the vaccine, we could be, we, you know, it could be different. We could have a better Christmas, we could have a better 2022. But if yeah. it's not, if we're not going to meet the targets, it's going to just prolong this whole thing indefinitely, I think. Yeah. Mm, exactly that. Um, no, I want club. to ask you <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> the press day. Where is the we had a conversation last week, Morsne, and I remember you yes. mentioned, we spoke specifically about Tumsa because we, we're constantly referring to support and um, having something from government and, you know, government gave the grants yes. and everything. And I remember you mentioned yes. that on our side, musician's side, our admin needs to be right because if you didn't have your tax information, all that stuff re ready and correct, then you, mm. you didn't qualify for a grant. So that's also the thing that we need to like check. But it feels like it's all like a big fat ocean and I don't know where I am most of the time. So how do we know? Yeah. It's like I just Googled trade union South Africa and came across Tumsa and they're very young, but two years yes. or three years young. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. Mm. Let's join and see what, what they're doing. So it's almost like why isn't everybody – on board with that and part of that union and informed about what we need because I remember going to Samra meetings, the, the AGM meetings, and then this house of crowd yes. people and then here and there someone mm. will stand up and ask questions and then I'll go, yeah, means welcome you from like didn't you know that? Or then somebody asked me to ask something. I'm like, oh my word, I didn't know that. So it feels like nobody knows what's going yes. on and nobody wants to read. What's I think list for Papirani? Um yeah, but we want to stand together. I most definitely want that to happen. But yeah, we should yeah, take the system is there. And yeah, the system is there and, and there are ways to work. That's what's nice about me working, you know, dealing with students all the time. We need to be uh, with the latest trends and that kind of thing. And obviously, Samra is not new, but lots of mm -hmm. guys neglect to, to just look at it and see how they can leverage it. Because you can literally, you can write, you never even have to have a song played on radio to earn royalties from something. You can, you can record your own music and when you go play gigs, the, 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 life of the venue pays a license fee to Samro and you get part of that license fee. And most okay. bands don't bother to do it. Most, a lot of venues don't even have a Samro license, but these days it's the less easy to get away with it. But it's, it's yeah. just a structure thing. I would, Industry is so informal, and it's it's always mm. been. Um, it's a really informal industry, and of, obviously you can't claim for stuff if you're not paying tax. But there are brackets yeah. that people fall into, and and stuff like that. And there's very few avenues for us to realistically structure a freelancing career, because um, the tax that you pay is, is, is very hectic. And I know you can claim stuff back, but. Um, for musicians, it's it's a difficult. I don't. I think they can actually, if there was a, a proper regulation um, process, they could maybe structure yeah. something different. Because in other countries, in, in Ireland, for example, um, the musicians work it in a different kind of format, just as freelancers do and business owners do. Um, in first world, some first world countries, there's specific structures for a reason. Musicians, mm. but that we can, like mm. you said, we must all go to networking events and engage with Samara and really hope yeah. that the Department of Arts and Culture 
um, after all of this starts to pay attention, it would be great, mm. but there needs more regulation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is exactly what, um, what Wayne said. I spoke to him yesterday. Wayne Bosch said the same Oops. thing overseas. Okay. This stuff is regulated. We need to regulate it, but yes. there's always been trade unions. None of it's worked. So we can't repeat the mm. mistakes that we made in the past. Something needs to change. And I think like, this yes. way that we're speaking now, this is necessary. We have to speak. Osmit can prod and say, but Oskani, we yeah. can't go to a meeting where there's 2,000 people and then you stick up your hand, but there's only time for five questions. You know, we have to be able to speak honestly yeah. about our experiences. Um, yes. Yeah, and um, look, the, the music industry has, it's, it's grown a lot. There's guys out there that are, that are really doing well overseas. Just look at DJ Black Coffees. Are we getting noticed? And, and the market is becoming more professional. And that's why, yeah, like you said, we need to communicate more than ever and training. I think, if, imagine there was a union and a regulating body and training where people could go and learn how to do this stuff. I know Samra tries, yeah. I work at a college and, and we do lots of stuff, but there needs to be, yeah. if there was a union, you could get a week's free training when you sign up or something like that, you know, or at least some yeah. kind of information. But at this point, no one knows how it works and the way it should work is not how it works. So, um, <laughs> but hey, on top of that, we are producing amazing artists and guys are, guys are sounding amazing and there's so many good things yeah. happening artistically. No, which totally. Is awesome. totally. Totally. I'm trying to think if there's something else I want to pick your brain about. Music business, the tombstone money. I just want to ask you maybe, um, what is your definition of professional, professional musician? If you, if you compare that to a doctor, right? People constantly say, you know, what doctors make more money and like that. You know, you go to university and you get a job and there you go and life's easy. But musicians struggle and all of this, and then musicians will, will complain. This is my job, and I have to get paid for mm. it. But then I ask, no, did, who employed you? Nobody employed you mm. to do this. You decided you want to do this. Yes. And then you have to make your own money. You can't be angry at the public for disrespecting you because they didn't clap hands when you played over that. Only paid 20, 20 rand at the door for 20 years. It's not their fault. It's your mm. thing. You can't demand um, payment. That's my view about it. And what does it mean to be professional? Because sure. it has a price tag. Price tags. Let's talk yes. money and value. It, it's, yeah. yeah, definitely it's a perception thing because that's what I think lots of musicians that come, become frustrated and that uh, you hear that kind of argument a lot. It sounds like they're entitled, but a lot of the time there is a culture in this country who, but like I said, it's been improving. But there used to be a culture of musicians not being a real job, and it was really deep and changed. Even till today, the legacies is almost the, the music education in schools. At least when I was in school in the 90s, it, it's, man, there was nothing, literally nothing. Yeah. You could go get the toilet at the pub museum down the road, but there was no music education, uh -huh. so it's not really seen as a, as a, as a relevant career. Mm. Hence no regulation, hence no business structures or places to go and figure out how to do this. Thing. But, mm. um, yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, we need to really um, just go and, and learn how to do all this and, and just play well. Sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> For that, today, to, to, to... Um, Today is like a lazy Friday afternoon, I think, for both of us. It is, eh? Like, I'm um, thinking of a million <laughs> things at the same time. Exactly. The question is, how would you define professional musician? Professionalism, and, yes. Yeah, professionalism. Yes. And, and what price tag would you put on, let's say, what mm -hmm. you do? Session bass player. Let's, let's just define that yes. a little bit. Yeah, look, that's that's the thing. You, you, you first need to add value before you can expect anything back. And um, then in life, the main thing is you don't get what you deserve. You kind of just get what you negotiate. So it is definitely a skill to brand yourself in such a way that you can make a price. And it's a market thing. It does really, you will generally get what you 
what you're worth in general. And um, there's ways of moving up the up the tiers and, and earning more. Um, but at the end of the day, professionalism for me is just an attitude thing with musicians. It's definitely an attitude. Someone, one of my jazz lecturers told me that, uh, you know, a good musician is someone that can play a song. They, see, they learn a song until they can get through it. A professional musician will learn it until he will never, ever forget it. So it's really mm. about knowing where you're going, having goals, and, and working hard to be the best musician that you can be. And then yeah. if, you're earning, if you're earning and you can, and you can look after your family and you can and, and send your kids to school and you live in a nice house and there's no, um, and you can survive on just music, I would say you can call yourself a professional. And yeah. you get there by, by really doing the hard yards. It's not an easy thing. It's a long journey, but guys are cracking it all the time. So mm. it's definitely mm. an option. Listen, um, I remember you mentioned something about um, Christian Bartman on CNN last week when we spoke a little yes. bit. Yes. was something with, yeah, please yes. just tell, tell us about that again. Yeah, they, they were on, we were talking about the um, streams and, and how artists, so singer-songwriters, and, um, you know, they started doing all these streams from their living rooms and stuff. Quickly, a few of them started to stand out. A few of them started to get a cool background and, you know, the, the mission to sort out these camera angles and how to connect Zoom <laughs> to um, audio. Thing. Yeah. That was the exactly. first month of lockdown for me. I, I, I never used to be a technical for me. It took me a while, but now so I'm doing it easily. Yeah. But I think yeah. they were one of the first ones to get it right quickly, got killer sound, got lights in there, everything, cool background, and they were playing. I think for 31 days, I don't know if yeah. they stopped, but on 31, after about 31 days, they had an interview on CNN, I think on the Africa yes, um, cool. section, but they had an interview mm. live on CNN talking to the, to the world about how they've been doing at least one stream a day for 31 days. Mm. Christian Bartman mm. and Yanni Lartigan, they just played and played oh, yeah, and yeah. played every single day. Some some nights they made zero, other nights they really yeah. pointed. And I think I remember him saying that one of the shows they had like 10,000 viewers, which is like, wow. and then others just feel for. But they Amazing. stuck to it and they did, they, they really, because that's their bread and butter. So, I mean, there were no mm. gigs they were used to getting five nights a week, or at least doing five gigs a week, all of a sudden there's no yeah. So big ups yeah. for them. And there were, there's lots of stories like that. But the, the, other, the flip side is not everyone had the capacity and the opportunity to do that. And um, mm, we did that earlier true. as well with instrumentalists. If, you, if you're not, if you're really just a hired gun, you're backing up people, obviously the other musicians know you, but where are you going to play? You know, you, yeah, and and guys That's like that had to dig dig deep, like myself, and start new projects and really drive stuff themselves. You don't have to be the front. You can call up a bunch mm -hmm. of guys mm -hmm. and, and and start driving the project. You know? mm. Like you you uh, you mentioned mm. the band that you're part of now, Ashley. Uh, just say the band. Yeah, name I started again. another band, Ashley Ashley Hilton and the Stash Band. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. Yes. It's, uh, it's a bunch of musos. Um, it's the coolest group of guys. Yeah, it's very nice. You can go check them out on um, YouTube. Ashley Hilton and the Stash Band. Very cool. Ashley Hilton and the Stash Band. And you guys were on Espresso yeah. also recently. So that's yeah, really cool. Yeah, we did that whole okay? thing. Woke up at four o'clock and went to the breakfast job. We must did. Yeah, so that's also on YouTube. No, it's all, always great. It was great. Oh, like it. Listen, yeah. I want to make a, like another comment about what Christian and them did. Musicians, freelance people have to create work for themselves all the time. And I think once you're in practice with that, that's something that you, if it's something you do constantly, it almost comes naturally and more easier than it would if you didn't have to create work for yourself the whole time. And I think that's exactly what happened um, with Christian and them. They, they started doing stuff and then it happened. It happened for them. It's not like they just mm. gave up. It's like that, that um, perseverance gotta, and create. Yeah. We teach a subject called entrepreneurial practice. And um, in that, in the first the first term, they need to identify characteristics of entrepreneurs and, and study all about that. So 
Definitely. Sure. Everything we said today is something that entrepreneurs possess naturally, but the rest of us can learn that stuff, you know, um, and that mm. is about mm. making sure if, if you have your own business, tomorrow's never a certain and, and very, if you're earning a salary, That's true. if you've used to earning a salary, or even for musicians, mm. you've got all these regulars, it's pretty safe and tight, and then all of a sudden there's nothing, it's not in everyone's um, natural abilities to just get up the price of the cows. You know, that, yeah. and, and that's a reality. It takes time and effort to learn these skills. Other guys might yeah. be very good at it naturally, and um, that's just different personality types. And um, the thing to realize is, is that there are lots of guys that, I'm not, I'm not going to say unable, but they don't have the opportunities and they just haven't found a niche yet, and they are still struggling big time. Big time. Mm. I mean, I've half exactly. my income. I've, I've, well, it's gone below half, it's now back at half where I was, kind of thing. Yes. Um, but, no. I mean, everyone with times are struggling. Really, really, it's, yeah. it's hard. And But that's the same with other industries as well, I see. So. Mm. Mm. Listen, Vat, it was nice speaking to you again today. I want to ask you one awesome. last question. Um, yes. Important question. I want you to, to tell us why did you decide that you want to be part of this project? What value do you think this will bring to the industry? Yeah, I think um, definitely some awareness. Um, as we say in the Cape, awareness. Uh, just so people Aware. can realize what the guys are going through. And, you know, um, we're, not, we're not looking for sympathy or anyone to feel sorry for us, but I think very few people stop and think of our little forgotten industry. It's really, I think, one of the last ones that's that's severely affected. Everything else is kind of going on as normal, but everything that yeah. has audiences, live sports, everything. I mean, those those activities and industries are completely there, and it's thousands upon thousands of people that have to, that are struggling, like we said now. And to just to, to create a bit of awareness around that school. And also, yeah, the only way we're going to get through it is to vaccinate. So, you know, if you, if you, um, if your doctor says you can get the injection, go and get the injection. And I would love to just That's play it. music and connect with an audience again at some stage in my life. That would be awesome. Yes, absolutely. Aquario. Well, um, Thank you for your time and the lack of chat. Um, cool. Hopefully we see each other soon in the Cape. Um, yes. It looks, yes. It looks like really? a, yeah, a vibe. Good. I get actually get Once we can leave the shower. Vader, toch, kan nie wacht. Kijk, die is een teken, hoor. Dat ek die shower gaan doen. Die ding kom af. Ek kom af as we speak. Yes. Dat ek vir my koe maak. <laughs> it's for Bayer. Okay, also you gotta get the arm chill, let me know where I'm gonna come back in. Binnenkort. Yeah. But like a dog here, sure. we speak again, don't cool. give you a day. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.